Okay, I think we'll go ahead and start. Um, I am going to share my screen and go to Google. So in the chat, I included a folder for you guys. And I'm sorry, boys, but they're my, my personal stuff that I use. So they are really girly. However, if, if you go to the Google Doc, Be a Teacher Club, this YouTube video right here, she goes in depth of how to make your own materials for your Google sites. And I think that you would you would learn a lot if you want to, if you want to do that. Um, so a little disclaimer before I begin. One, don't feel like you have to like take notes or do anything because I was very thorough in making sure I added everything into that you would need to make your own folder. Nope to make your own website into this folder so you can just listen to me in the beginning and then I'll tell you whenever you can be more hands-on and I'll try to go slow but also it is being recorded so you can go back if you're like wait I forgot how to how to make a copy or something or something like that so um I wanted to give another disclaimer that these websites did take me a long time to get to where they are. And like, as you can see from my portfolio, I'm still working on them. So it takes a while, but we're just going to go down the basics and give you a foundation. And a lot of these resources that I shared from you are from Teachers Pay Teachers. So if you just like go on there and you're like, I don't like any of these templates, there's a lot of other templates in there if you're interested. So first I'll go over my classroom website it, um, really quickly. It, these buttons here are the same thing as the ones up here. I just think these are cuter and they're like trending. You, if you're like, I don't have time for that. Don't even worry about it. It does the same thing as up here, but if you press them, they'll go to those that page. Um, to let y'all know and then I introduced myself and I have a place where if this were my real classroom I would already have like classroom newsletters or something like that where parents can go and look at what what's happening in the school and a calendar the thing about classroom websites is you would have it's a lot of work you would have to keep it updated all the time and you would have to make sure that it's up to date and parents could actually utilize it. So think about that before you put in all the time. Like, do you even want a classroom website? Do you want to put in that work? Something to think about. Also like on this help my classroom, this would be like in the perfect world. I would ask parents for this in the classroom that I'm in right now. I would be lucky if I get a water bottle for their kid they're not going to go and buy me ink. So that's also something you might want to think about when making a classroom website. Um, it's not the perfect classroom like in your exams. It's the real world. It's, it's a lot different. Uh, my last thing for classroom websites is on the resources for parents. You can add videos of yourself teaching or um, there's this really cool iPad app. It's money. But um, I think it's worth it. It's called Show Me, and I I don't pay it, so I can't I can't um, show you. But it is like a whiteboard, and so you're writing on the whiteboard. I don't know if any of your professors have used it, and you're recording yourself, kind of like Zoom, except for it's not your face; it's just your writing, and you're explaining like, here's how we add, here's how we divide, and then you can upload it to your classroom website. Oh, that was a lot of information. Does anyone have any questions? Am I going too fast? No. No. Some of the uh, some of the items I can't download. I was trying to download them ahead of time so that I could look through them, but I think some of them are maybe locked or through a third-party cookie issue. 
Okay. Um, which one in particular do you know? All of them? I think it's the PDF one. So it's creating a Google website. And this is how to create a new Google one and then how to make a copy. I was trying to download them ahead of time so we could open them. And it says download failed. Third party cookie must be. Okay. okay. Um, hi. I'm going to make a note of that. And I'm going to try and sign in real quick. And maybe if I sign in, I might be able to download them. I didn't think about that. I'm going to try and sign in. Okay. Okay. Let me know. If anybody else has any questions. If not, that's okay. Uh, I didn't really want to. Oh, go ahead. Monica. Oh, no, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just wanted to um, go over that really quick in case anyone was interested. And making a Google site for the classroom, but I know we're really all here for a portfolio. So I'll just go ahead and move on. Feel free to stop me while I'm talking if you have any questions. When I'm nervous, I get kind of chatty. So I'll talk about everything but what I'm supposed to. So on your portfolio, when looking at mine, I wanted people to look at it and say, she's very organized and like accomplished she's like a lifelong learner you could pick any three topics that this is advice that i've gotten um three traits that you want to say without saying so if you're really great at technology if you're really great at um anything you would try to make your website say that without saying i'm a lifelong learner um my, I already told you mine. And so on my portfolio, I, like I said, I'm still working on it and I'm obsessed with cute buttons. Um, so I have those. Um, also for me, I have like this video and they, uh, my kids that I'm student teaching with are like rated me. And so if they so wish to spend their time doing that, they can go to my press this video and have my students read my students work so that's something that you should think about if you wanted to add that um I'm replacing um this powerpoint with this video this powerpoint just kind of says like um stuff about me interview questions um other things that you can add are like technology I think I already said that one if you're really great um like I know Sean is really great at like C plus and C plus plus and all these other um technical terms adding that would be really awesome um any professional development that you've done campus events classroom management social and emotional learning and parent family communication those things are really great to add to your portfolio you can add your resume you um, can add any lesson examples. I have um, pictures from me teaching plus lesson plans and I have lesson plans from high school and from college. And then I also have like college work. So if you're really interested in um, a, a specific subject, like you really wanna teach third grade math, then you can include those lesson plans that you've taught before all about third grade math. So they know like, wow, she's really interested in this, this grade. Um, videos of me teaching, I think I said that, and like any curriculum you might have made, I don't know, anything, anything like if you were a para and you did something, anything you created just for fun, I would add it in there. Um, any achievements that you've been in, like being a teacher club, a Delta Pi, those things you can add in there and, and um, if you like we're in the dean's list any professional development but they don't know that your science teacher told you to take this course or um, your student teaching I don't know what the class we're taking is but um, that professor asked you to do a certain amount of hours in professional development so add anything with your name on it um, all of these were required for school 
So um, it looks like I spent all my fun time doing these things, but they don't know it was required. Um, those Kappa Delta Pi professional development webinars that you have to do add everything. So now that I have talked about that for too long, we can start our own website together. Um, if you can just go to your Google Drive, it should look like this. And then give me a thumbs up when you're ready. And then something to let me know. Unmute yourself and let me know you're ready. Okay, thumbs. Thumbs. No, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Then, um, to if you are wanting to start a new site, you can go to new and then scroll down to more and then Google site. Is that too fast? I'm sorry. I'm trying to. And then it should be a blank slide. And if you want to name it, go ahead and do that now. I'm just going to put example. That way you can see it also changes here. And title it something cute, something that you're interested in. I'm going to say portfolio. Um, but like I said, this is just the base. You can leave a blank, do whatever you want. This is your site. If you follow me this way, it should have three pages where it says insert pages, themes. On themes, they have really cool um, different themes you can check out. You can change the color, you can change the font, um, you can play around with that. If you go to custom, you can even like make your own this takes a long time, but you can make your own like images, background, um, logos, and anytime you make a new site, you can, it'll pop up on your theme. Um, but I'm going to go down the list of things that I thought you might be interested in knowing how to do. So we were in themes. If you just go down to front pages to insert. You can add in text boxes, you can add in images and um, links or from your drive. My favorite thing for the buttons is to press this, these four pictures here, and you just add in your button, which we're gonna go over a little later. If you scroll down, you can add anything from your drive, which I think is really cool. Like you can even add a map of where your school is at. You can add anything. Um, YouTube videos, calendar slides, but I wanted to add an image carousel. So if you scroll down, this is the top, scroll down, it's like the third down, um, this little icon, image carousel, if you press that, then um, you press the plus sign in the middle and then it's up to you. I don't know if you have um, things on your drive where you can upload an images from your desktop or you can select an image for right now you can just go to photos no uh, google image search and look up whatever you want i'm just going to add these three pictures you have to have at least two for an image carousel so you can just press random ones or go to google search and type in something random and just pick three pictures once you, or however many you want, you can just press insert. And is anyone lost? Does everyone, is everyone, if you're doing it with me? Just, just make sure to use uh, free images or what they call uh, stack images. Oh yes, um, for copyright issues, right? Yeah, it's only happened like once in like the 15 years I've ever created websites. It's only happened once, but it could happen where someone's like, oh, you've used my image without permission. Please take it down. Yes, that is true. Thank you for that. That is very important. When I think about me making these, I really think about 
things that I've created. So I would try to steer clear of that thing that you found on Teachers Pay Teachers and add it to your website because that's probably a great issue. Copyright. But if you press, um, I'm sorry, if you hover over the picture, don't click the picture, you can also add text. So just this other button here and then add caption. You can add text to it. And I thought that was really cool. You press insert. And while you are not in preview mode, you can't press through it. So if you click this icon up here, it's preview. Um, you can click through your carousel and you can see your text on the bottom. Out of preview mode. To get out of preview mode, you just press this X here. Bottom. And uh, I forgot to tell you, you can also make it bigger and smaller. I don't know if you want to do that. So um, we changed the theme. We did an image carousel. So now to insert a page, um, you go back to these three here where it says insert pages themes. You can press page. And on the bottom, if you hover over it, don't click it yet. You can add a new page. You can add a link or you can add like a new menu selection. Right now you can just add a page and I'm gonna name it PD. Um, you can just name it something silly or if you wanna name it like resume or you know so anything you wanna include, you can do that now. Um, Something else that you can do is if you click that page that you just created or any page like the home page and click these three dots and go down to add sub page, you can add, I'm gonna name this, uh, no, I'm gonna name it. Okay, I'm getting nervous. I'm just gonna name it anything random. Um, then it could be down here. So like you, you go to home and then you want to go to PD, that's fine. But if you want to go to your resume, then it could be down here as like a little sub page, a different page. There um, so that's how you insert a page to your Google site. Does anyone have any questions? No. Okay, so this is like really beginner. So if you already know how to do all of these things, please let me know. <laughs> I'll, I'll do something else. No? Okay. Okay. So to add a PowerPoint, you would go back to this insert and you can do it a lot of different ways. Like I said up here, if you just go to your drive, everything from your drive pops up. So you can go there and add a PowerPoint or anything from your drive. Um, but if you scroll down, you can go to slides and then all of your slides come up. I'm gonna add my calendar. You just press what you wanna add, press insert, and you can make it bigger, smaller, match with it however you want. It, over here, you can duplicate this section. So if you wanna add the calendar, but or a different slide or anything like that. You can just duplicate it or trash it. And to change the background, you, you just press the palette, paint palette here and you can change the background. Um, what I like to do is take like a cute, cause I'm really girly and I like things cute. I just screenshot a cute color and then go to images, upload, and then, oh, and then it turns into that color. So that's something that I like to do, um, a hyperlink. So to add a hyperlink, you can, I'm gonna add text. So if you double click on Google Sites, this comes up, which is the same thing as over here, where you can, um, get an image, upload something from your computer, upload something from Google Drive or um, a link. I'm just gonna press text and say, click here to go to YouTube. 
And so you can change, you know, the font, the color of the font, whatever um, size you want. But I want to have people click, click here. I'm going to highlight, click here, and then press this, the same place as the link. But it, I'm, I'm sorry, the same place as changing your font, but go over to this little link here. And then you can have this link to a different one of your pages. But I'm just going to put youtube.com and then apply. You can also have it linked to like the CFI or no, <laughs> your district, um, your district website or anything like that. And you have to preview it if you are making it same thing to look at your Google slides. You have to go to preview mode in order to see them. But you can click there and then it'll take you to whatever you whatever you want. So that's how to add a hyperlink. So for the buttons, um, if you just have a screenshot, you can just drag that image in. So if you already have a button saved on your computer, you can just drag and drop. If you are using one of these, it's better if you file, download, and then get it as a JPEG, JPEG here, um, just for quality purposes. It's just better. Well, I already saved it, so I'm not going to save it. But also, um, the this is the screenshot. It looks like this. It's on the Google site, and that's what Sean was having trouble opening. So I'm going to try to figure that out soon, in case you forget. But let's go back to the example. To upload it from somewhere else, like your Google Drive, you can press the button, and it goes to Drive, select an image, upload. I'm going to upload it from my computer. And then you just click the one you want and then open and it should be there. To get it to go to a different page like this one, um, see when I clicked it, it took me to a different page. You just click, hello. You just click that one, that button, hello. And this Screen should come up where you can crop it, you can uncrop it, and then insert link or delete it. If you insert the link, it should automatically come up all the pages that you've made, and then click the page you want, and then apply. You can also have it, which I did not know this. I thought this blew my mind. You can put mail me, and then this little, what is this called? It's, it's not a semicolon, it's colon, right? Cool. Yeah, it's a colon because you're directing it. It's a colon, and then you put in your email address. So I'm going to put in kdkuhd at gmail.com. And then, hmm, why aren't you letting me do this? And then you press apply. Oh, come on. Let me do this. Well, I'm not really sure why it's doing this to me. Um, try, try semicolon just in case. Sometimes it's colon, sometimes it's semicolon. I literally made sure to do this today. I made sure on the, on the Kappa Delta Pi website, I made it to where it is contact us and then email. And so whenever you do that, it goes straight to their email and it has it your email address already there ready to go. So, it's so frustrating. Um, let me try doing the page. So you go to the pages and you hover over the plus sign and go to new link. And then you do mail me colon kdp uhd at gmail.com email oh, are you kidding me i'm gonna try my email maybe
That is so frustrating. I am not sure what's happening, but I did it today on this website. So I know it works, I promise. Is anyone trying it with me? Did you try it now? Does it say invalid? No. Okay. Could you could you right click another link and do source info and see if what the mail link is and then maybe that's what that is. Yeah. You know I'm talking about. So if you already have an established mail link, right click that oh. link for source info and then see what it see what the direction for the URL is. So, so you see anything that says properties or source of link? This one? No. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, do you want to show your screen? So I can, I'll stop showing my screen so you can share. Oh, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'm not sure. Technology is so weird. Mabel is trying it out right now to see what's going on. I promise, guys, I have been practicing and I tried it this morning. It was working. I, I, <laughs> um, I bet you it's just like a small character, like it needs to be in parentheses or something crazy like that. It's always just one little thing with stuff like that. Yeah. If it doesn't work for you, just keep trying mess mess with things until it works. I promise, guys, it's it'll work out. <laughs> well, we know it worked one time, so <laughs> um, we'll just go ahead and move on. So to be respectful for everyone's time, so I'll share my screen again and move on we don't have too much more that was buttons so now to add youtube it's super simple also because you go to insert again and scroll down so insert scroll down and there's a whole button for youtube so you can just look it up. If you're a YouTuber and you've added YouTube videos, like for your portfolio, I know some, or not your portfolio, um, for class sometimes, like for class to show my observation, I had to upload a video, or you can just Google, I mean, sorry, YouTube, any video that you want. Like if you recorded yourself for your class or something, add that in and it's super simple. You can make it big, you can make it small. Again, you can change the background, anything that you want. So that's how you add a YouTube video. Um, and so the last thing that I wanted to talk about was making a QR code. Back in like 2019, whenever I started making a portfolio, it was really cool to do a QR code. Now it's like there's QR codes for everywhere, like even the mini is a QR code, but I found this out and it blew my mind you just right click hello yeah right click and the screen should come up oh and you have to be on google chrome for this if you're not on google chrome i don't think it works um but you right click and this menu comes up and you scroll down and it should say create a qr code for this page and then it just makes a qr code and you can screenshot it, you can download it, and then like add it to your resume or email it to the person that you want looking at your portfolio, or something like that. Um, but does anyone have any questions? Because that's all I had before, like we're almost done. Wait time. No. no, it's it's pretty interesting so far. Um, using Google Sites is almost like using a publisher. The only difference is I don't see anywhere to upload meta tags. That's the only difference I see. 
Meta actually, tags are just yeah. basically like ad words. That's all they are. Just words that make your website click. So. Oh, okay. I think we need a PD from you, Sean, about all of this technology stuff because it's interesting to me. Um, just. What? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, uh, okay. Um, um, this is probably a silly question because you probably already said it. But the portfolio is this for um just our own personal website or like we would add it to the other website you showed us earlier or is this for the actual school website it's for uh two different ones so mm -hmm. you would do the portfolio to um try to get a job and kind of like make yourself stand out a little more um you are making a portfolio right now for uhd and it's tk20 Mm -hmm. So if you're like, I do not even want to waste my time doing another portfolio, then that's completely fine because you're already doing that. Mm -hmm. um, but I just personally felt like for the UHD portfolio, you are only doing work that you are told to do. Mm -hmm. And with your portfolio, you can show work that you're actually interested in. That's okay. the only difference. Okay, no, I like this idea. I just wasn't sure. So are, we're like, we would share the link with whoever we're interviewing with. Okay. Yeah, thank you. The only thing I would change, and this is just, this is just, you know, me talking here, is I would add a link for your LinkedIn here because your LinkedIn profile will be all your job history and stuff like that. And that way they could click their LinkedIn profile, like, hey, find out more about my job history and what I've, where I've worked. Click that link for your LinkedIn history. That, that'd be it. Everything else in this portfolio looks nice. It's streamlined. And that's what you want. You don't want it, but you don't want it to be too busy. I know mm. people, they just get into it and they love it. Next thing you know, they have 35 buttons and you're just like, oh. Yeah, that is very true. That is something to think about, definitely. I need to make a, a, a LinkedIn profile. I, I haven't gotten on the LinkedIn term yet. So the good thing about LinkedIn, and this is what I did a couple of years ago, is I don't use resumes anymore. I use my LinkedIn profile and I just export it and then it has everything. So, you know, once you build your LinkedIn profile once, you have that resume forever. And so all I do is I'll list like my last three jobs and you want to know about more about my job history, click my LinkedIn profile. That's interesting. I am gonna do that tonight then. Um, but yes, that thanks for sharing that. Um, also for you guys, I included some like teaching advice that I've gotten over the years. Um, these things I've gotten like from school or like from other people. I don't know if you're interested in it, but I included it anyway. It has like first year teacher stuff, classroom management, classroom procedures, stuff like that. Um, when you're student teaching, if you student teach, you have to do like a, a whole classroom management assignment where all of those things and like you have to say what you're going to do. So um, I included that for you guys, my buttons that I use, my teach, uh, meet the teacher templates, a calendar that I really like to use, and then like screenshots of things that I've talked about as well as my QR code if you're interested in looking at it, but right now it's not done. So look at it, but don't judge it, please. Also, right now I'm gonna share the link and it's in there with you. I am very interested in what you guys thought of this. So if you can please just take two minutes and be kind. Um, and give me some feedback on how what you thought about this um pd that would be amazing it's just like three simple questions and um thank you for coming thank you for sharing and being here i also just put the google folder again if you're interested in having it you can star it i don't does everyone know how to star a, something no okay i will do that now I'm going to share my screen one more time. So to star, I'm going to go here. You, you click, so you're on your Google Drive. And if you go to shared with me, that's where the folder should be. Unless you just click it, then it'll just be your folder. So I think you will see this because you click the folder. 
and here's where you are. You go up here to the title, creating your own website, and click this drop down. Scroll down to where it says add to start. Click that. And then on the side of your Google Drive, on the left side, um, if you go to start, it should be there. Does that make sense? Okay. So that is all I have. Unless anyone has any questions, you can go. But I just want to say that I am here for you. I included the email, my email address. If you have any questions about the PDs, the program, testing, anything, if you want to know anything, I am here to help you. Student teaching, I'm also going to say our student teaching if you're about to go into student teaching. So thank you. Thank you for coming. I do want to add that I really appreciate you taking the time and showing us this. I remember when she told us about it and Dr. Miller was like excited about it. And I was like, whoa, that sounds interesting. So I'm really grateful for you to actually take the time out of your day. I know you're very busy, student teaching is busy. Um, everyone take advantage of the links, copy and paste them. Um, make sure you save them because it has a lot of information on it. Um, I really enjoyed it. And I'm probably going to make one, like, for sure, for sure, like, <laughs> before I graduate. And I also want to add, if you were in here, if you could just type in your name on the um, chat, please. Um, KDP people, I already took a screenshot, so I will give you credit for that. Awesome. Thank you so much. Did anyone have any questions or comments or concerns? I do have a comment. Um, yes. Again, I, I want to add to that. I do thank you for this because I didn't even know anything about having a profile on your own. I think that's a great idea to where you can have your even the parents go on and, and see your ideas. And like you said, I know it would be very um, time consuming to keep it updated, but I think it would be a great resource for parents. Not only that, but there's a lot of technology apps out there that you can link this app to your profile. And so it's just all kind of like one database being shared. And so if you have any classroom management things going on, they can log into this app and see your portfolio, see everything about your background, see how the class is doing, see what's going on next week for upcoming events and stuff like that. You can integrate this stuff and just make it one, you know, massive database. Basically, it's like a uh, what do you call it? An all all in one thing that you could just visit once and just update it every time you have a new class. Alrighty. Well, again, thank you so much for everyone who came in and took time. Monica, thank you so much again. Um, and if no one has any other questions, comments, concerns. Um, then you guys are free to go. Uh, um, I know you guys are from downtown, but in case like you guys know of anyone who's interested in be a teacher club over at the Northwest location, we're always happy to have new members in here. Thank you, Katie, for joining us also.